Welcome folks. Today I was going to be talking a little bit about spark plugs. This particular video uh, will just be an introductory one for today. I'll do follow-up ones and give you a little more information on uh, adjustments, uh, how to read them, uh, particularly where it's, uh, your engine's uh, running condition is concerned. Uh, you might say this with a spark plug it could be uh, considered the barometer to your engine. It uh, will tell you a lot about uh, uh, maybe problems or how, how well uh, the engine is functioning as far as uh, the engine uh, burning the fuel air mixture as it comes into the cylinders. Uh, on your left here, this is actually uh, a new spark plug. It's out of uh, a lawnmower, believe it or not. And uh, the reason I got this one up here, although it doesn't really uh, apply for size or fit to a vehicle's engine, it's just uh, the best thing that I could come up with to show you um, how far down this is recessed here. Uh, the older plugs in the old days, uh, it was kind of a standard back then, they actually recessed this down and in, but they found out in later years, they came up with what they call uh, the projected nose plug. Might not apply to all all cars on the planet, but uh, these ones, uh, mostly in domestic vehicles that I've seen and worked on, you'll notice how much further this central electrode sticks out. It's coated with porcelain and the actual firing tip is the metal part that you see right in here. And there's a gr what they call a ground strap or outer electrode here. The uh, actual spark after the high energy voltage travels into the plug uh, will fire between these two electrodes here creating the spark to ignite the mixture in your engine. I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. And they found with these uh, projected nose plugs they stayed a little bit cleaner um, at idle and, and at uh, high or traveling speed when you're driving your car. Uh, these ones tended to, to foul a bit more and uh, these uh, with this design anything that I've uh, learned about these things is uh, at idle uh, they, they do tend to burn a bit cleaner and uh, at higher speeds the incoming fuel air mixture will, will kind of cool these things if you will. Um, that's it for your basic type. Like I say this is the most standard configurations for domestic vehicles and probably the older ones that you're used to seeing if you've ever uh, worked on any of the, uh, the spark plug areas and heads of your engine. Uh, that's the most typical you'll see. You'll notice that the ground strap router electrode goes up and over the tip there. In another example that I have here these two are actually different ones out of a, a Mazda rotary engine, probably in the oh the mid 70s. Uh, they came up with this kind of a plug. Uh, there's no valves in that kind of an engine. There's two rotors um, and four spark plugs, two spark plugs per rotor. These are two different styles. I've tried them both in the, those kind of vehicles. Uh, they essentially the same. Um, you'll notice here there's a dual outer ground strap here, center electrode in the middle and on this one it's got three side electrodes and uh, I guess they, they found that you get a better spark coverage perhaps I'm not really sure why they went to this but that's what was in the rotary engine of the day um, you'll notice too on the side here the center electrode actually comes up and almost uh, well, I can't really say flush. This one is almost, almost flush on the triple-sided one. It actually comes up and it, the spark hits it from the side of the tip as compared to, like I was mentioning here, the most conventional one you'll see uh, where it wraps up and over the top of the center electrode. These ones actually come in on the side. Um, there's another style here. While well, we're in the center electrode par portion, this one is uh, this one is uh, precious metal. It's got a platinum center electrode on it. It's a very, very fine, you can hardly see that in the video. But these ones, uh, they, uh, they wear much longer. Uh, if your engine's burning clean, not a problem. Um, this, the gap growth probably won't be that great. The thing you had to watch too, I was warned by a partsman years ago not to put these in, say, a, a Chevy 350 engine. He says, uh, customers were saying their engines were getting messed up and 
and blowing up, if you will. I'm not really sure what the story, exact story was, but he says don't put these in your domestic. So make sure that if you do put a, a new set of plugs in your car that you try to get the, the factory recommended ones. If you start playing with different styles and stuff, you could end up with some really expensive trouble. However, if you've, you've got uh, confirmation that it's, it's going to work well and everything by all means, but uh, try to stick with the factory recommended ones and you'll almost guarantee yourself uh, you know, not having a big headache and a big repair bill, perhaps replace your engine. We don't want to really be doing that. Um, there's two different styles that I've come across here. Um, the older style had this washer here, ceiling washer. The head was machined flat just around where the, the spark plug enters the head. It's a compression washer. Actually when they're new the washer is quite a bit thicker and as you, you torque that down to the factory recommended um, torque specs, uh, that washer will squish and, and create the seal. Um, with the, the stuff that came out, oh, I'm, I'm going to take a guess around the mid 70s perhaps, they went to this tapered, uh, maybe even earlier than that, maybe might have been in the early 70s, uh, I'm just trying to remember what it was. And you can actually check that kind of a specification on the net or whatever. But then they went to this tapered um, seat. There's no washer on it. The head is machined with a matching taper so that when you you tighten up the spark plug into the head the tapers match and that creates the uh, the seal so you don't have any leaks when your uh, your engine is uh, operational. Um, that's the two different basic styles. You'll see they may, might even have come up with some more um, but these are the two basic ones. They both use a different size socket on there. This one, uh, this hex, uh, six-sided hex head here, it uses a 13 sixteenths out of your, your typical socket set. And this one I've always used like a, a 5 eighths inch on the smaller one. The taper seat one is a smaller hexagonal size here. So it uses the 5 eighths on the tapered one and 13 sixteenths socket on the um, one with the washer. Uh, well, there's that part of it. Um, things you got to watch for. Uh, I'll, in the future, uh, the videos that will be uh, coming after this is I'll be showing you how to set the gap and how to read the colors after you've installed, uh, especially new ones. It's the best way to read a plug is get a fresh set of plugs in there, and then drive it around for a while, and then when the engine cools, you can remove the plugs and and do a, what they call a plug reading on them. You can see. Um, the coloration on there, uh, the wear pattern on the electrodes, uh, the gap growth, this part in here between the two electrodes is called the gap. That's where the spark occurs, if I had mentioned it earlier. Uh, you set that with a what they call a, a feeler gauge, or I'll be showing you the different gauges in the other videos following this one. This is just an overview um, video just to give you the lowdown on basic spark plug identification and how it operates. Alrighty then. So, that's basically what they look like outside of the engine. Um, thing, one thing of caution, um, especially if you don't have the exact match plug, let's say for instance uh, you just said, oh I'm going to buy those plugs. They look about right. Never do that. And the reason why is, is this. Um, let's say for instance Oh yeah, it all looks the same. They're using the same size socket to put them in, but let's say, just for argument's sake, that this was the style going into your car's engine. Although it's a lawnmower uh, one, it's a really good way to explain it. You put this into your engine, you tighten it up. That's the distance that it, it goes into the combustion chamber from the, the base of this washer to the end of the electrode. Okay, so it's called reach, this part that I'm getting at now. All of a sudden you install something that isn't, isn't uh, made for the engine. The threads, the screw threads here, they physically will screw into your engine. The problem is, as you can see there, if this gets put into an engine that was only requiring this reach here, this would get so far into the engine that when the piston came up, it would not only start bending and breaking the end of the spark plug, the piston would actually hit this. and. Uh, it would damage that, but then the damage to your engine, say if it was just barely touching, 
and your engine's running, it would destroy this. And no telling what kind of internal uh, engine damage you'd do, especially if the thing got to, to actually operating. The little parts break off here, you get porcelain and stuff, you can start uh, scraping up uh, cylinder walls, uh, wrecking your pistons. Uh, also, if that starts jumping around there, you can wreck your valves, both intake and uh, exhaust valves. So always make sure that you try to get the factory uh, recommended plug for your particular engine. Um, like I say, if you start uh, doing the guessing game, it's going to get really expensive. So it's just those uh, simple words of caution. You can see there it's quite visible, the difference. Also, when you're um, going to replace your plugs, take a look, physically um, have a look at the new plugs and put them side by side and make sure that they, uh, they're the same reach, the same thread, hopefully the same hex um, size here. Uh, there are, are a few changes that happen. Um, so, some plugs will be identical here. They're, they'll be the match that the parts guy gives you for it, but some, sometimes up here in the upper porcelain area. It could be a bit different. On here it's not such a big issue, but down here you really got to be careful. You don't want too long a, a plug and conversely put too short a plug in one that requires this well, the spark isn't going to be anywhere near your fuel mixture to ignite it, so always make sure you do a physical check on your plug before you do any further damage. Um, oh, what else have we got to say? Um, yeah, just uh, when you install them, just, just don't get too crazy on it. Take a look at the, the manufacturer's specs. Um, they, they might say just uh, 10 or 15 foot-pounds, say. So you snug them up in a bit better, but don't don't really, you know, get yourself a long wrench and, and try to de destroy the thing. I mean, you start stripping threads in a, in a cylinder head and stuff, and it gets expensive. That's if you can even repair it in aluminum head. Oh, geez, uh, I wouldn't even want to go there as far as cost of uh, repair and replacement of an aluminum head. So be careful when you're uh, working around these things. And. Uh, Make sure you keep it safe. Don't be uh, working on engines while they're running. Um, unless you've got lots of experience and you know where you're heading, you don't want to start losing fingers and possibly a hand. Um, I would say uh, anytime you work on the electrical system in your car is disconnect the negative battery terminal on it and make sure it's not going to touch. That way there's no possibility the car can start on you. Uh, you might even have dual batteries if you have a pickup truck or something. Make sure you disconnect both of the negative negative terminals on uh, your battery. Um, okay, so that's about it for the intro introductory video for today, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the other follow-up should be coming along in the next few days. Everything goes well. So take care and have a nice day. Bye for now.